Well, Anthony, uh, so great uh, to meet you. Uh, big congrats uh, on Drift. Uh, this is a, a powerful story. Uh, I, I love how, in a way, um, it's shot like a documentary. You know, when you're following uh, Cynthia's character, you know, through the streets uh, of this uh, Greek island. Was that something you wanted to do from the very start? And what do you feel that it adds uh, to the movie? I, I wasn't, you know, I, I wouldn't use the word documentary because, you know, I I think um, a lot of the mise-en-scene is quite motivated and calculated as well. But I would say I had a brief to the cinematographer. You know, I, I did tell her, I think it's very important that, you know, the way we capture Jacqueline and tell her story, like it shouldn't be exploitative. I feel like it needs to feel naturalistic. And I and I feel because we are on, you know, an idyllic sort of like beautiful holiday Greek island, you know, I I, I did tell her, you know, we can't be photographing, you know, it needs to be beautiful, but it can't be too beautiful. You know, it needs to be pretty, but it can't be too pretty. You know, like we need to capture that grit and and that tackiness, you know, of those surroundings whenever you're on a holiday as well, you know, and for me, that was, that was important. So, yes, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm taking more of an observational approach, you know, I didn't want the camera to be invasive. Um, and I didn't want it to be overtly stylized as well. But you could, but there was very, very, very specific you know, like ideas in terms of how the mise en scene of this film works. You know, if you if you were to slowly um, scrutinize the film, you would see that for me, it's not just about capturing Jacqueline as the character or her emotion or her face, but it's also about you know, for me, capturing the space, this landscape, this island. For me, this Greek island very very much is a character in the film and what I was trying to do is to also capture, you know, that tension between Jacqueline and this backdrop, Jacqueline and this landscape. It's man versus the environment. And and that tension, that detachment, that displacement is very much the heart of the story. How tricky was it to, you know, walk towards that juxtaposition? You know, you're showing this beautiful island, but then we see, you know, the harsh reality of this, you know, the world that Jacqueline's living in, you know, her reality. How hard was it? Um, well, you know, from a execution point, it was hard because we were shooting in late spring, you know, so the Tavanas have not opened yet, you know, for tourist season, like the beaches were empty. So everything you see in this film, we had to plan and we had to fill up, you know, like, um, the beach with extras, you know, the water was actually too cold for swimming, but we had to to mock up late spring to be like, you know, like a peak summer season. So a lot of that tourism was was created. And of course, you know, many, many people might not know this, but it is slightly a period film as well, because the historical sort of backdrop of the film, you know, like, was in the late 90s, early 2000s. So even though it doesn't feel that period, but there were certain sort of like uh, details and nuances that we are very uh, watchful of. And how was it you became involved? Uh, you know, and this is also based on a, a book. Uh, when you read the screenplay, did you, and read the book, of course, uh, did you get that instant emotional connection? Uh, with these characters? You know, I was introduced to the book by, um, you know, the producers, um, and some of them have known my work for a long time. Um, um, two of them were sales agents on my first and second film, so they, they knew my style of cinema, they knew my sensibility. But um, I'll be very honest, when I was first introduced to the material, the book, and also a very early version of the screenplay, I wasn't that sure because you know my 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 early films were all made in a foreign language. They were 
you know, been in Asia, specifically in Singapore. Um, the story of Jacqueline, you know, she's from Liberia. Most of this film happens in Greece. Um, that backdrop is quite far removed from my own upbringing, from my own culture. But, but I was very moved by this character of Jacqueline. You know, there was something very honest. There was something very real, something very earthy, which, you know, very grounded about her experience that I rarely see in a lot of screenplays. You know, a lot of screenplays, you know, like it's, it's a lot of character by design or they are, they're very loud or, or, or idiosyncratic, you know, just so that they, they, they are slightly goofy or cinematic or whatever you call it, but there's something really uh, sincere about her experience. And I was moved by it, but I was haunted by it as well. And, and, you know, I kept thinking of her and, you know, in the end I was thinking, I'm going to have a go, you know, like I want to, I'm curious about her. I want to tell her story. I want to know more about her. And we began the process of finding another screenwriter. Um, we found British Irish um, screenwriter, Suzanne Farrell. Um, and I worked with her for a good period of two years and we worked hand in hand. It was very, very collaborative. Um, you could see from the film as well, you know, it was, um, it was very much a singular vision um, of how we thought of this film. And, and together we lived with Jacqueline for, for over two years. And, and I, I, you know, like we landed her on the page and, and eventually brought her to the screen. And before uh, we were talking about, you know, you've lived in the, the UK, you lived in you know, other places in the world. Um, how much of your own personal experiences did you draw up on, you know, to help shape how you made this movie? I would say, you know, I, you know, when I look back at all my films now, I, I you know, I see a recurring motive. Or even all my previous films, it's always about an outsider. It's always about an outsider trying to connect with that space that, you know, like, um, you know, he or she is, is, is sort of like walking through, walking upon. And, and there's always a sense of, it's always about displacement. It's always about a search for identity. And, and I've been thinking about this, but actually I'm that outsider. You know, I've, I've been constantly, you know, like pondering those questions of, you know, where do I belong? You know, what, who am I really? I've, you know, I grew up in Singapore, um, I went to school in Singapore and then I went to, you know, went to film school again in the UK. I've lived here for 15 years. You know, I've, I've built um, um, relationships within the community, within the industry. But somehow, do I feel British? Not really, no. You know, like there's that sense of, yeah, but at the same time, when I'm back in Singapore now, I feel like a, a stranger at home. So I'm, I'm I, I feel like I'm constant, you know, like I'm I'm a bit like Jacqueline, you know, I'm this constant wanderer, you know, I'm I'm drifting as well. I'm I'm sort of like um trying to find that sense of identity, that sense of in fact I've I've come to a point where I've realized that, oh, perhaps maybe I'll never find, you know, like the actual exact definition of what home is to me. Um you know, home now is wherever my wife and kid is. Um, now, I must say, uh, this is an, an incredibly emotionally raw, uh, you know, movie, um, especially, you know, the, the bathroom uh, scene. Um, did you find yourself getting caught up in the moment and getting emotionally uh, involved, you know, when you were filming that? Um, or were you, you know, sitting back as a director and just watching, you know, the amazing work of both, you know, Cynthia and Ali? I have to say, like, I've never been so emotional making a film. I was, you know, I've, I've never, like, cried so much making a film, really. You know, I I teared a lot when I was developing the script. You know, most of the script was developed during the pandemic, and it was a very stressful and a very um, 
anxious time for most of us. You know, you feel sort of very displaced and lonely. And I thought, and I think a lot of the feelings converge with Jacqueline's experience as well. And then when making the film, you know, seeing Cynthia do her work, like, and watching Jacqueline, you know, she might be breaking down before the camera. I'm, I'm like there behind the monitors and, the, and I'm there sort of completely in tears as well. I felt like my heart was bleeding for her. And it was, and I took a very specific approach, you know, when in reference to the bathroom scene, I knew, you know, when I was capturing that, that sequence of flashback, I wanted it to be a very subjective experience. If you notice, you know, the entire um, sequence, it was very much shot um, from the perspective of Jacqueline. You know, she was watching as all these horrors were happening and it was what she was seeing from her direct perspective. If not, the camera would be just on her. So it was very singularly subjective. And I, and I felt like it was also about the audience sort of experience saying um, how she experienced and how she lived through um, that memory. When, um, you're going, when you're going through that, you know, after, you know, that sort of scene, you know, how do you help Alia? How do you help Cynthia, uh, I suppose, come out of that headspace and, you know, get away from that emotional uh, trauma, I suppose? Well, um, I, well, I guess it's about, it's about getting out of the bathtub, right? <laughs> you know, you get off the, if you get off that space, you get off the bathtub, you, you know, I, I think there was a lot of, you needed to feel the warmth of, of, of humanity. You needed to feel the warmth of the people around you. I, I remember like we finished that scene and I was there hugging Santi. I was there hugging Alia and and you needed to believe that, you know, like there's still all this warm blood flowing in you. And even now, you know, because I've 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 seen the you know I've worked on this film for some time. I you know I, I had to deal with all this material and we're cutting the film. I've seen it a couple of times um, in screening rooms, and, you know, like, you know, at festivals and I've decided like, no, I'm not going to watch the film again. You know, I, I myself need that distance. I need to depart from, you know, there's so much, I think all of us, whether as actors or as a director, as filmmakers, you know, we've put a lot of our own emotions into this piece of work and, and now, you know, like it's, it's time to, direct that emotion at the audience and and right now I'm trying to find some space for it um, yeah but it was a very cathartic process I have to say and I felt like a lot of my own anxieties a lot of the pent up sort of frustration and emotions and um, and nerves you know like during the pandemic you know we're all sort of like pouring into this, this piece of work. One thing that comes across, yeah, you've got, you know, the, the, the sadness, but in amongst that, there's, you know, that message, I suppose, of hope. Um, how important do you think that is now, you know, given, you know, the state of the world and, you know, things that are going on? I, you know, like, sadly, the world is in a very bad shape, you know, like, um, you know, every day when you... Um, read the news like you feel like oh is this the beginning of the end but I'm, I'm still an optimist you know I I'm a, I'm a humanist and I'm, I'm also an optimist I you know just like in making this film I, I believe that yes you know there are a lot of moments of darkness but but where there is darkness there is light um, which is why I was thankful that if, you know eventually we shape this um adaptation where it became a two-hander where you know like the character of Kelly you know brought a bit more levity a bit more lightness into you know this world of Jacqueline and, and it helped to you know show us that yes you know we can be trusting of people that we can believe um in humanity and we can believe in um 
that you know eventually uh, the human will can trump over um yeah a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of evil and to to be honest i wasn't i didn't expect this film to be i mean we all knew you know when we all came together to make this film that it was an important film um, to tell but but i i feel like it's even more poignant like now than ever you know like looking at the the wars that's taking place around the world looking at the number of refugees that are being displaced day by day but everyone has got a complex history everyone has got a complex story and and everyone deserves a story to be told uh, and one final uh, question uh, anthony a uh, lot of your work is uh, quite emotional uh, are you now tempted to do something uh, more light-hearted uh, what are you working on at the moment i i am working on a few things you know i've i've written a film um that's part of a trilogy, you know, like the first film um, I made in Singapore is called Ilo Ilo, and the second film is called Wet Season. Um, both films star like uh, the same two actors. You know, I discovered um, a boy in my first film, he was 11 then, um, around 10 years have passed, he's 21 now. It's my growing up trilogy and, and, and I'm looking to shoot that film. Uh, back home in Singapore and it's the closing chapter of my growing up trilogy where you witness the coming of age you know where you know this boy has really sort of moved towards adulthood so that is something um working on at the moment I'm also looking for you know I, I feel like I've done a lot of serious dramas and if I keep doing this I'll, I'll just be soaking in a lot of depression so I did tell my, tell my agents like maybe maybe I need to to do a, a comedy you know and and to be honest like the best comedies are ultimate tragedies right <laughs> so yeah perhaps perhaps I I I do need a bit more lightness um uh, more levity and and I'm searching for that I think uh, whatever you do is going to be uh, interesting for sure. Um, Anthony, thank you so much uh, for your time. You know, best of luck uh, with the film's release. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!